Hi guys, it's me, Jadabra for reacts I'm back. And uh, I actually thought of giving you somewhat of a taste of what's to come and uh, kind of a treat uh, for me. The way I can present it, give it. Uh, and uh, I thought of uh, playing Minecraft, and I don't know how many of you who watch my channel. Uh, either regularly or who just came into this episode who play Minecraft. Let me know in the comments. But uh, I know some friends who play Minecraft and I host my own little server even though it's almost a private server. I would like other people to join but my internet is... I mean I played with a pal an old, a old friend of mine from uh, uh, how is it? the first grade uh, and we played on the server, and we also used Discord, the, how should you say it, the Skype 2.0. Um, and we uh, used Discord to hold a talking session, and we played Minecraft. And he connected from outside into my uh, server. And he was lagging a ridiculous amount. Granted, my mom was uploading to Dropbox, to Dropbox which uh, butchers our internet completely, but the fact still stands. So, if any of you could come up with any idea on how to uh, how to be able to host a server, and I don't want to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm that type of guy that likes to make you know, just pick up the hammer and hammer together some type of a homemade solution uh, without letting it cost a dollar. So if any of you have any free way of hold, maybe like, you know, cracking uh, Google Drive or Dropbox and being able to host a server through maybe a plugin on that, I'd love to hear it because I would definitely try it on this on my server here to get it out. Then maybe we even get to use it as official. But yeah, and I was actually planning on... I actually got the idea now when I woke up this morning to make a tutorial on how to build nice structures because being a loyal uh, Grian uh, follower, and you could check out his channel up there. Uh, was it one? No? Up there. Somewhere there. Yeah, wherever it appears, uh, go check out his channel. Definitely, he is a master builder. Uh, and as a loyal Green for, and uh, his his guides has helped me a lot because before I just built you know those boring structures, one layered. But now I can actually build really nice uh, three dimensional, really nice structures. So big thanks to him. Uh, for teaching me, and I was actually going to show you around a bit. So, the server is called Block Dust. I came up with that myself, I even made the icon. Uh, even though the icon was just a picture I took from the internet. Now, I just gotta be very careful here, because as we know, Minecraft is a RAM hog, and I cited that from Linus Tech Tips. And I have, even though I have 16 gigs of RAM, if I go over uh, 10, things will start to die on me here. But okay, so let's just uh, now I'm I've built all of this in survival, and I thought of showing you the bunch. First of all, we have this place right here. Now this. First of all, I have this with uh, some dirt blocks and uh, slab slabs and uh, trapdoors. Oh, and by the way, the texture pack I use is called Beyond the Lands. Uh, I've used it for a couple of months now and I'm not planning to go back to the original because this is just so much beautiful and enhances my gaming experience. So, okay, so let's get down there and uh, look through a little what we have. Here I made a little pond in which it continues to flow down into uh, my well, my well here, it flows into the, there. And uh, then I also have another one here which comes, which actually comes out from the bush. It was the best I could do. 
go over there. Uh, and we have the house, but before we go to the house, I want to go into the mine, actually. So, in the mine, you see we have all of these different block types, and this was all dirt before, and I think there's some trays left of it. Yeah, they have dirt. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Here, first we go to the mine shafts. And down here, I built this, which I'm actually pretty proud of. It's my underground base when I'm mining. I'm this where I'm based. So here we have all the comforts of home. We have chests, we have furnaces, got some food in there. What seeds doing there? Alright, I'm going to take those out and throw them away. Crafting tables and here alright I'm not going to show you what's up there because that's a secret. But uh here you see I've used these pillars and then a fence and a uh, torch on there and then nothing much here just slabs and um, staircases and different blocks types just made to make it look nice and then I almost forgot to read danger beyond this point so if we just hop skip and a jump I actually cut out this whole segment here was one solid piece of block before this whole segment here but I cut it out so now we can walk in there and uh, then we have my mining area in here and uh, yeah just a random mine down here and this mine actually through that connects over to my second base which I'm going to show you after the showcase of the first and where we're going now after we've come up fr out from the mine is probably my new pride and joy because it is a really beautiful thing I managed to hammer together yesterday. Right, I'm worried what that was. Alright, but it's this. The nether room. First of all we have <laughs> nether wart forms in here with this room uh, modeled after a nether cave with glowstone. And then we have nether warts down there, hope I don't get foot warts now. And this is the Pride and Joy, this is my real Pride and Joy, because first of all I think I managed to do this design really well and it really gives it a majestic feel. Secondly, I built a bridge uh, overlooking the... Alright, let me just... no, I'm not going to do it on that side because I'm not... I'm going to die. I can't do it here though. Oh, yes. You see how I built the bridge with uh, stairs on the other side to really give it some shape, even though you would probably never see it. And then we have lava coming out of here, magma blocks, uh, this uh, glowstone up there, the bridge here, and then just some more there. And then I thought that another could actually start, you know, almost grow out. Uh, of the room, so that's why I have all these here, and then into the nether wart farm there. I think it worked really well, and I'm really happy with it. And then we have this house, uh, which is... Now let me see, what could I point out here? The hanging roof here was actually kind of a hard design to make it look dynamic, and, you know, really... Uh, that it bends under its weight. Putting a small farm, this is not this is not a practical farm, this is just for the looks of it. I love it. Then we have the house itself, and I definitely want to point out, even though I failed on that side uh, to make a good overhang, I may actually redo this to make it give it another block overhang. But I want to point out the roof, that it's this sagging shape of a roof. And also that we have the frame on this block, and then one block in, we have the wall. This is something Grian actually taught me uh, when I watched his tutorials to make that. And then in here we have clothes, clothes hangers, clothes hooks, or something, whatever you want, if you want to put your hat there. These levers, um, they do absolutely nothing. Crafting table, uh, this little table here made from log. This little design, which I came up with myself, I actually like it a lot. 
then this I will mansion explorer map which I acquired recently and man I will mansions hard to tame I got killed like two times just trying to get in uh, and then you see this wall is completely punched out it has many holes and stuff but for this house which has windows that are in that you know punched out design I didn't see I managed to make those almost ex they're exactly alike well and then a tiny window out to the garden uh, this design works really well here and then I have that one up there and I also want to point out in the roof to make, give that some extra appeal I put these half slabs under here uh, just to give it you know that more extra 3d feel and then here we have the supply room also known as the uh, how do you say it the attic with some punched holes in the roof uh, just some random blocks here you see a little table we have there we have here um, to make it look like supply crates and then these things and my bed and then a tiny window over there and a, also a tiny window over there the dead bush or the a savanna uh, plant here we have the stables nothing unusual just uh, you know these sagging trying to make it look as dynamic and rough as possible that's one thing I definitely want to point out make them look as r make it look as rough as possible don't make it look destroyed or abandoned but make it look like it's roughened up and it's maybe not the uh, new hardest thing in town because that would really make it look good right I wish it was nine already then we have this my uh, fishing dock and these are not world edited or cheated I got them from a mine shaft wait I got them from a mine shaft if you use shears they will uh, you'll get them if you use the sword or anything else you'll just get uh, what is it the strand but if you use the shears you'll get cobwebs you see also over there what are you doing here, stupid? Hey, stupid, why is your face like that? If any of you gets that reference, uh, let me know in the comments. But we have a dock here, and uh, let's just go in and take a look. And then I made a little improvised garden there just for the added appeal. And then we have uh, nothing unusual, uh, just some furnaces and stuff. And the classic punch hole in the wall type uh, window which I'm a big fan of a table and this is something I actually I really wanted to do and I'm happy I did it because it turned out really well the top side because first of all we got these big windows here which also could be used as sniper ports uh, we've got this big airy airy area here uh, the bed and then another place here to stand and watch and then you can just walk out here and fish whatever you like I'm not too big for fishing but it's wait what aha so we have a skeleton here a stupid thing but okay enough about him then we have the then we have this the farm this was a huge undertaking when I did it because it was uh, after I built that one, a long time after after I built that one, but before I built the fishing house, I built this. And now, first of all, I want to point out the fence. The fence here is incomplete and just kind of. It looks like I'm just randomly spammed it everywhere, but it's actually a design to the mess because I wanted to make it look uh, like it was not fencing off something. Uh, an area to not you you shouldn't be able to get in because you should but it should what I wanted was to show the outline so that's one thing to use with the fences use it as an incomplete outline you see as I down here because you can clearly see where it where it stands uh, that this area is supposed to be ported off but it still isn't uh, you know 
you can walk in from there and you can take whatever you want from it. It's so, okay, just gonna look at my RAM, I'm up at 9 GB of RAM uh, used. And then we have, you know, just melon and pumpkin farms all over here. But I have these bushes all over the place and uh, some of these sugar canes. Now that's a really neat way of doing it, I think, because. It really gives it this feel of this is not a well tended farm in the sense that you know I keep everything picture perfect but it's it's a bit of a rough farm you might say because I got you get a whole crap load of food out of this thing I mean tell you this this part right here uh, all the carrots which are this layer and that layer down there at the same on this those carrots could supply me for a long time let alone this whole thing if I was to harvest it but I mean I just harvest a bit of it because it's so big but it looks really neat I'll show you from the from the upside and then we have this thing which I am currently working on it's not finished yet as you can see because I make the roofs perfect that's another tip make the roof a perfect roof as I've done here and then just knock holes in it and make it look like it's sagging and you know everything just roughen it up that's actually an easy way of doing it perfect roof and then roughing up but then we have the uh, the smithy here with some uh, crates here uh, the furnace there uh, we'll pull of water right here this thing actually started burning some time ago when I when this wasn't as well made. It was a rougher design. And then we have the supplies here. I'm not finished with it, I just want to say. And then I have these two doors which were meant to be like shop doors so you can pull stuff in here. And then this should be kind of a workshop area of my neck. Right now I've been here for almost 20 minutes, just jabbing about one base. But okay, and then these are just farm areas, I will remake them. And then I'll make a brewing, a place for brewing too, I'll be back when I've completed that. But okay, so let's go into my map, I use voxel map, it's really great. <coughs> okay, so I have these three bases to go over and then the hobbit hole down there. The hobbit hole is the only one of these bases which is incomplete. So then we go to... No, we actually don't. We'll go to this house. I forgot to map it, to mark it on the map, but I, uh, I actually made this house. Uh, it's a tree house. This is probably... Oh, there you see the house which we're going to later. But this is probably my least favorite of them, because I, I view it as a failure. Because even though it's cozy and a nice place to be, uh, if I manage to get this thing hosted, I'll rent this thing out as a beginner base. Or if you just want a base, I'll rent it out. Maybe you even could buy it from me, but probably I'll rent it out because I, I don't like to... Yeah, alright. But... Um, it's actually not much to say here, it's just a tree, a tree house base. I probably made this in like three or four Minecraft days or something. It wasn't hard to make, It's, but it doesn't look that good. Then here we have the classic mine design I'm accustomed to, or, or that we've grown accustomed to. And uh, let me see. Here we have the next house. And this one was actually first built as a tavern. I thought of it, but I built it using a tavern design from the medieval times, but I think it works out really great because we have these vines hanging from the balcony there, we have the windows with the overhangs and some uh, flower pots up there, we have one a one horse stable here, although I didn't include the water source, maybe built that in, built that in later. Uh, we have all the framing in the in the walls. You see, like that pillar there. Some more flower pots at different angles to 
uh, accentuate the y coordinates. I think it is y coordinates. Some supplies and stuff under here. <laughs> and this is the thing that I think makes or breaks this house. And that is this part here, the little smithy type part. Because we have this overgrowth hanging over it. And I think it just works out well integrate using that much green to a house with, first of all, this dark colored uh, roof. And so we go in, and on the basement, in the basement, we have supplies, a little area for uh, workshopping, and uh, the stairway going up to some more storage here, a workshop area here with a qu quite nice design I figured out with uh, uh, utilizing these doors and stairs. Some more tables, blah blah blah, the kitchen, nothing. I see I can't use that one. Uh, nothing strange in here, cauldrons, savannah, uh, wood. Nothing strange. Going further up, we have here we're going to have bookshelves when I'm finished with this. Uh, we have this little wall right here with supply crates there, beds there, uh, some more area we could put like. I, uh, what's the name of it? Okay, we could not put a uh, chest there, but we could put a chest there though. I'd like to keep that one open, and then a little workbench here overlooking this place. And, uh, let me see now we, if we go out. Ah! We got this, this easy kind of a stable, and I want to point out I did not roughen up the roof on this one. This one is just a plain roof. But it works, utilizing a lot of this uh, dirt path, the new block from like two or three updates ago. And it's actually really great, both to use inside of the stable but also as walking ground. Now, going to the Egyptian base. Uh, this one was probably the, the most pain I've ever had making a base because this one was probably the biggest challenge. But I think it actually worked out really well. And we have, uh, let me see, what do we have? First of all, I used the savanna log because I have a savanna over there. And what I want to point out, these bases or houses, I've made, I've, I've given myself a special challenge. Build a base in as good as every biome with only the blocks you can acquire from that biome and the surrounding. And I do not mean like if we work in this place here, going over to this place here, but I mean like the savanna over there and maybe the forest and stuff over there. The same if we work in this forest here, we do not go over to like this place or the swamp over there, but it's that forest there. So, first of all, we have spruce doors. I had to import some stuff though. But these were more like aftermarket stuff. Then uh, we have a flower pot, a little table, uh, yeah, a little th uh, thing here. Lots of storage, some uh, windows with these stained glass pane designs, uh, a bed in here table in here, one could put something like a chest or something up there to, you know, just fill the void. Going up, we have a bar room, burned sandstone bar, I came up with that myself, and, uh, and then also just some designs like you see here, nothing nothing big, just utilizing a lot of signs because I have I had a super lot of signs over uh, from an experiment that I tried. And if we go down, first of all we have a trapdoor down there to the mine, I might change that and put it like over here instead. And then we have a door going out to some water and hay bale in the stable and then using some dirt to show that the horse has been here and like what it's left over. Oh and yeah, almost forgot. And then we have, out here we have a farm. I think it actually integrates really well. This, I think it looks really swell. And then one maybe could 
put a window behind there, or maybe a window there, but I don't know. And then, if we go into this house now, first of all, we have the hanging bridge there, which is not my pride and joy. I am not really happy with it. We have a mine down there. Uh, that's my stone mine. And just a couple of farms here with, you know, the classic designs of uh, some uh, some fences. And then we have this house here, which I am really happy with, actually. What is that white? Yeah, you also see it. Uh, this white thing, like, right there, there's a white line. What is that? Is that GPU damage or what? And then you see we have this house here in a classic, I don't know which area type to sound design, but it's a wooden lodge. And if we go in, uh, first of all, this little area here I think really gives it a good feel. If I just had the door, it wouldn't be the same as if I had this. So that's also another tip. Uh, utilizing uh, lots of these. Right, first of all, this place right here, the, the entrance hall. Uh, funneling you into the house, almost making you skip this part here with the a very very knocked up fireplace, very sculpted and then just some random tables and stuff sofas a kind of a sagging uh, sagging uh, shelf and why is this so underlit out here? luckily I have another torch with me there we go and uh, out here on the porch, you see we have some tables and some stairs and a little flower and stuff. Also, I haven't roughened up the inner part of this uh, this roof. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. And I also this is a inner roof. This is not the roof you see on the outside. So this is also a te technique you could do: build an inner roof, and then bunk beds, uh, some more flowers some minor storage and then some furnaces and here one could like put like water or something I just put that one there looks good and also full windows I use these uh, these fences because I thought it would integrate well into the design and let's just before we teleport to the last base let's just go over here and take a quickie from the bridge, take a quick look on how it looks. Now that looks really well in my opinion. That looks really swell. But let's teleport over to the Hobbit hole right there. Let me see, we're up at 2.9 gigabytes. This is my most unfinished base. Because, you see, here we have the Hobbit hole. A little a little ring there with stained glass if you can see it some farms, nothing big but I want to point out I left some of the grass here to make it look really integrated into the design some dirt path and the classic you know knocked up wooden fence design Ouch. Uh, a little waterfall that is going to be removed because this was just a holding, holding stable for my horse and then if we go into this, I want to just point out the designs of the ring here. You is you are the worst shot ever, mate. And in here, it's very unfinished because I'm going to rebuild it in this style you see here. But I did build it in a more ca cavernous style here, but I wasn't really pleased with that. Then a tiny fireplace. Putting a torch in the fireplace is actually a good way to imitate fire if you can't hold fire in your house. And then over here we have, this is the little ring I show you. But yeah, that's all for now. So let's return back to my home base. Uh, so we'll put him back. That scared me sometimes. Uh, but then you see, another tip is to make it as integrated as possible, I mean with these stuff. Putting, flower, putting flowers and some grass, do not put grass in the way you're walking mostly because it gives it the wrong feel, you want to have it flat where you're walking. And then you yield the mine. 
but then just trying to integrate everything with everything, with a double layer on everything and everything. That's really a good design. And then this knock, knocking small dents in the wall can actually be really work really well. And over there you see the treehouse I had. Actually, just for the sake of this video, let's teleport ourselves over to the treehouse. Whoa. Well, well, what? I teleported myself on the treehouse. Right, this is not something I've done. Wow. Right, but let's try to climb down from here. Let's see if we can do it without losing our life. Right, we lost a life. Crap. So let's get up into the viewing area here. Wow. Now that actually looks quite well. And you see I also used some pumpkins. Jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, to light up that area. That's actually a good way to do it. And... I forgot... I seem to have forgotten to show you something. This little entrance here is just, you know, a tiny little non-saying entrance. But it's actually a very beautiful view. But okay. So I'm going to log out here now. And thank all of you for watching. And uh, that's all for me from this time. And if you got any idea how I could host this server for free, um, uh, with custom worlds and a you know not that the service removed after X amount of days time thing let me know in the comments definitely tell me in the comments because I would love to do love to see that and uh, I would love to host this server uh, for also others to join because that would be actually really funny to see what uh, others could do I have one interested already who, who has been in playing on the server a bit talk about yeah that's all for me from this time and uh, thank all of you for watching see you next time